I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and welcome to another installment in my celebrating Disney series where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney regardless of quality, animated or live action under the main Disney banner. And this series is in conjunction with my Nicolas Cage birthday month. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to the cage man! Happy birthday to you! Today, on this day the video dropped, is Nicolas Cage's 57th birthday. Happy birthday to Nicolas Cage, one of the most unforgettable actors, one of the craziest actors, and one of the most original actors working today. And I picked a special movie to review on the day of Nicolas Cage's birthday. It's a movie that definitely means a lot to me and it coincidentally is a Disney film so it was perfect to do a celebrating Disney review of this movie. What am I going to talk about today? The action classic from 2004, National Treasure. National Treasure was released in 2004. The film was directed by John Turtletaub, who also directed the movie Sequel, and he's also directed movies such as the live-action Sorcerer's Apprentice, Cool Runnings, and most recently The Meg starring Jason Statham taking on a Megalodon. National Treasure was produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, a legendary action producer who's produced so many classic action films such as Top Gun, Con Air, The Rock, Gone in 60 Seconds. He's also produced Disney films such as the Pirates of the Caribbean movies and so many other classic action films. National Treasure was released to financial success, but it did have mixed reviews when it came out. Shockingly, with a 46% on Rotten Tomatoes, but its fan base for this franchise has been huge, especially for kids like me who grew up with the National Treasure films. So, National Treasure, this is a movie that definitely meant a lot to me as a kid. This is a movie that introduced me to Nicolas Cage as an actor, so nostalgia is very high for a movie like Nicolas Cage, and I'm sure this will be a more biased review compared to most. So what do I think of this movie? Let's find out together. Obsessed since childhood with finding the legendary Knights Templar treasure, Benjamin Franklin Gates tries to decipher ancient riddles that will lead him to it. Now in a race against time, Gates discovers he must steal the Declaration of Independence to prevent this landmark document and a key clue to the mysterious treasure from falling into the hands of a ruthless enemy. And this movie stars Nicolas Cage, John Voigt, Harvey Keitel, Diane Kruger, Sean Bean, Justin Barfa, and Christopher Plummer. So this review is going to be so biased because I love this movie. I loved it as a kid and I still love it to this very day. This was the movie, like I said, it introduced me to Nicolas Cage as an actor. I've been a fan of the actor ever since and I'm an even bigger fan of the actor to this very, very day. This is a movie that got me into the action adventure genre, if I'm being honest, because I saw National Treasure long before I saw the Indiana Jones films. So, pretty much, Ben Gates was my original Indiana Jones type character, if you will. And it's really crazy to say that, because a lot of people grew up with the Indiana Jones films, and I have a lot of great love for the Indiana Jones films and they're the superior adventure films but you gotta give National Treasure some credit too if you want to do an Indiana Jones type adventure have a more modern aesthetic to it and do some unique ways of doing an adventure story the National Treasure I think did a great job with something like that and Nicolas Cage 
does an amazing job in the lead role. I think his crazy caginess, I will admit, is a little scaled back in this movie compared to some of the other crazy Nicolas Cage roles that he's been in over the years. Like, if you compare this with, like, Vampire's Kiss, that would be an unfair comparison to make. But Nicolas Cage still delivers in the lead role. And it's quite hysterical, honestly, seeing Nicolas Cage actually play a smart genius in this. That cracks me up when I see the film, because he usually plays the oddball nitwits in a lot of movies. And here, he's the smart guy, he knows his history, He's very researched and everything. He can solve all these clues in a heartbeat and make everybody else look dumbfounded when they can't figure it out themselves. And that's what I love about Cage's performance. Like, the movie has a ridiculous tone throughout and Nicolas Cage just sells the craziness of this movie. Like, the theories, the conspiracy theories in this movie with the Knights Templar treasure and an invisible map on the back of the Declaration of Independence. Like that whole stuff is just complete nonsense, ludicrous, but Nicolas Cage sells you into believing that the conspiracy theories are true and you follow along with them on this crazy adventure. And that's why I think this movie delivers because the action, the adventure, the mystery, the clue solving and everything, it just delivers because you you want to see this adventure play out because of Nicolas Cage in the leading role. So this is a movie that means a lot because it introduced me to the genius actor known as Nicolas Cage. Another thing I have to credit this movie is that this movie got me hooked on American history. Uh, even though this movie is based on a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of stuff, there are some interesting aspects of this movie, how it dives deep into secrets of America's past with the Founding Fathers and the Knights Templar treasure and the Declaration of Independence. And there's so many great locations that's shot throughout in this entire film. We get the National Archives, we have Independence Hall, you get to see the Liberty Bell. There's so many great intricate details and Easter eggs placed throughout this mystery and adventure that as a kid it intrigued me to dive deep into America's past. I did it, it made me intrigued about the intricate details of this country and I made me a fan of American history because of that. That stuff very much fascinates me and even in a dumb fun popcorn blockbuster movie like National Treasure, the fact that this movie helped intrigue me to American history, I think just speaks wonders to how fun this movie truly is. And also, like I said, this movie did get me into the action adventure genre. Like I said, I saw this before the Indiana Jones films, and I still have a deep appreciation for this movie to this very day. This movie, I can't say, will work for everyone because I know critics didn't care for this film when it came out. I'm, I'm sure the average critics will high artistic art will not see much value in this movie because this movie is not the next Citizen Kane or anything like that. It's just a popcorn blockbuster with a lot of cheese and ridiculousness, but I honestly don't care. I think this is a great film. I honestly love the action. I love the adventure. Nicolas Cage sells it. And the rest of the cast do a great job of selling you into this movie, too. Like, everybody is invested in their roles. Sean Bean plays our antagonist, and I enjoyed his role. John Voight plays Nicolas Cage's dad, and he plays a good father figure. And then the grandfather is played by Christopher Plummer. He delivers in his one scene, which sells you into the premise of the movie. You got Diane Kruger, you got Justin Barfa. Everybody does a great job with what they are given. The movie does feel like a product of its time with the way the movie is shot, the way the movie is edited sometimes. You can tell this was a mid-zeros action film with the way the movie was edited, with the way the movie was scored. But as somebody who grew up with this film and who grew up with a lot of these live action Disney films, it's all part of the charm. This is something that, you know, every kid has their movie that they grew up with. And even if the movie is not, let's say, perfect or high art, 
there's something they hold value to because it's something that they grew up with and have that huge nostalgia for. And National Treasure is definitely that movie for me. This is something that, even though this movie, you can pretty much nitpick the plot apart with the conveniences and the contrivances that this movie has throughout this whole mystery and how dated some of the like the filmmaking in this movie truly is and the editing and stuff like that. I still think this is an enjoyable film and I also forgot Harvey Keitel is also in this film. Yeah, you wouldn't expect Harvey Keitel who's been in a lot of Martin Scorsese films and Quentin Tarantino films to show up in this movie but he's in this film he's he's part of the FBI who's on everybody's trail and he sells his role too everybody is awesome in this movie I love the clues I enjoyed seeing the locations I enjoyed seeing the rich history even if it just played for blockbuster fun but I enjoy this experience. What more can I say? This is a movie that, even though it's dumb fun, it's dumb fun that I truly, truly love. I guess it's one of those guilty pleasure type movies because it's technically not a great movie, but it's something that you just can't help but love because of the experience that it has to offer. So this is a very biased rating. Consider this junk food movies, Taco Bell movies, as Sean Chandler likes to say in his videos. I just can't help but love this film. You can revoke my film license because I love this movie so much. But you know what? Everybody has a movie where you just have to shut your brain off and just enjoy just the absolute fun out of this movie. And both National Treasure films are like that for me. So with all that said, what am I going to rate National Treasure? I'm going to rate National Treasure a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting an 86 out of 100. Also, if anyone like me grew up with this film and had on DVD, does anyone remember that little cool little clue game you can play that's hidden within like the notes? of the DVD where the chapter selection and stuff that what is you can go through the bonus features and play a game and solve all the riddles and stuff like that. Does anyone else remember that? Because that was such a fun experience for 10 year old me. That wraps up my review of National Treasure as part of my Celebrating Disney series and also part of my Nicolas Cage birthday month. I'll leave a link in the description below. For that series, you can check out some of the other Nicolas Cage reviews from the month of January to celebrate his birthday. I got other reviews that I'll be doing throughout the month of January to celebrate his 57th birthday. You can check out my other reviews in the playlist down below. At the time of this video, I've also reviewed Gone in 60 Seconds, Leaving Las Vegas, and Vampire's Kiss. And like I said, I got other reviews coming very, very soon. This is also part of my Celebrating Disney series. I'll leave a link in the description below for that playlist where you can check out all the other Celebrating Disney reviews I've done so far. My animated reviews, my live action reviews. There's so many reviews I've done at this point. And if you want to see more of my past videos, click the link in the description below so you can see more. If you're new to my Celebrating Disney series, each week I review and celebrate all things Disney, animated, or live action under the main Disney banner. And each week I alternate between animated and live action reviews. My animated reviews are done in chronological release order, from their theatrical animated classics to their direct-to-video sequels along with the Pixar films. My live action reviews are more freestyle and are prone to request. If there's any live action film or franchise you'd like me to tackle in the near future, don't be shy to leave your request in the comments below. Or if you follow me on Twitter, I'll occasionally leave some Twitter polls where you can help decide future celebrating Disney reviews. Be on the lookout for some of those in the near future. I definitely appreciate the feedback. It definitely keeps the celebrating reviews exciting and fresh the more the series goes on and I appreciate any feedback in re regards to this series. Join me next week in my Celebrating Disney series where I'll be reviewing another animated film and it's unfortunately another direct video Disney sequel and that is Beauty and the Beast The Enchanted Christmas. I haven't seen this thing in so many years. 
I don't remember it being that good even as a kid, but I will rewatch it again for this series. So be on the lookout for my review of Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas, coming to my YouTube channel next week for celebrating Disney. But if you've seen National Treasure, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. Also, since today is Nicolas Cage's birthday, share in the comments down below some of your favorite Nicolas Cage movies. Is it National Treasure? Is it Vampire's Kiss? Is it The Rock? Con Air? Any Nicolas Cage movie, name your favorites in the comments down below to help celebrate Nicolas Cage's 57th birthday. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, I usually do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!